Well, when you're talking about clear skies and 17, 18 degrees, it is very hard to believe that we are going to see the cold and potential snow over the next several days. Thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. A new week and a new weather pattern to speak about Yeah, as we end uh, spring's first meteorological month and uh, start to approach a secondary uh, month of the season we are talking about a significant change. Exactly how cold and how long the um, this outbreak will, will last is going to all remain open to question. Um, but it looks as if we are going to see the threat of snow, especially over high ground, but not exclusively over high ground. Um, but I want to, in today's video, bring you back to exactly where we have uh, came from uh, in terms of the uh, the overall situation. Uh, of course, I've alluded to the um, the stratospheric warming uh, here on the channel for quite some time, and uh, what that essentially is is uh, you know this is the various levels of the atmosphere. Uh, the stratosphere basically extends from approximately six to as much as it will about 10, 10 kilometers to about twenty kilometers above our heads is the layer of the stratosphere uh, from about um, 10 kilometers down it's the troposphere now over recent weeks we've seen the warming of the stratosphere it has had multiple blows if you will where it's been um, the warmth extending from siberia in towards the pole has been attempting to break down what has been a very very strong and cold polar vortex within the stratosphere but eventually uh, the warming has done its dirty work and we are seeing the warming within the stratosphere. What does that mean essentially? It means that we are seeing the cold that is in the upper levels of the stratosphere warming up and getting forced downwards towards the troposphere. Now of course there is two uh, polar vortexes, the first being of course the 10 HPA polar vortex up in the stratosphere, the secondary being the tropospheric polar vortex and when you see the warming taking place within the stratosphere it doesn't necessarily guarantee that we're going to see a warming down uh, through the layers of the atmosphere we don't see always that downward transfer of energy uh, but in this instance we have seen that taking place and we have essentially forced the super cold air over the stratosphere and within the stratosphere down into the troposphere and that too has been warming up as well. This is the um, the level here of 70 HPA, which is the lower portion of the stratosphere. And we've seen significant warming taking place from Far East Asia in towards Alaska, right away across the top of the pole. And in essence, the cold that is coming now this week is a direct consequence of that warming um, within the atmosphere here. We are seeing, uh, you know, basically instead of having low pressure over the um, over the high latitudes, we've got now high pressure. We're warming the atmosphere within the Arctic that then drains the cold into the low latitude region here. Again, doesn't stop there because we don't guarantee cold within our part of the world, the UK, Ireland and Western Europe. Um, even with a sudden stratospheric warming, the areas of high pressure and low pressure that develop have to set up just nicely. And it looks as if we're going to finally see that at a time, like I said in yesterday's video, that we don't want to see it, unfortunately. Granted, it's the time of the year. We've got a summer strength sun now, folks. And therefore, of course, we're not going to get the same type of cold that, say, a, a minus 5 to minus 10 uh, isotherm at 850 millibars is not going to deliver the same type of cold that we would see back during the winter months. Um, you know, we've got a lot of different things now fighting against cold. Arctic air that comes out of the, the Arctic region, and of course the sun's gathering, uh, gathering height all the while up there as well. But as that Arctic or polar air gets driven southwards, it it is, is almost fought against by uh, the warming sun. But we still can get a sting in its tail. And sometimes these warm winters have a kind of a sting in their tail, if you will. Especially when you get early warming 
during the month of March, where you get temperatures, say, you know, 20, 21 Celsius, like we've seen, you quite often see cold spells with snow, um, even in places such as London. And I mention London because that could be a place that we see snowfall in the coming days here. All very interesting times to come. So looking at the GFS, I'm going to try to rattle through this reasonably quickly and break down exactly what takes place, the evolution of the pattern here. We've got an area of low pressure over uh, the north of Europe, as you can see here. High pressure, of course, over the British Isles, continuing with this fine settled weather. But that area of high pressure is living in borrowed time. It deflates, and uh, essentially, it opens the door to Arctic air uh, running southwards here. And of course, with low pressure further south, trying to lift north, we need to keep our eyes on that here as we go forward. But we also have the frontal boundary moving south and uh, it may develop an area of low pressure as it moves south. So as cold air, as Arctic air moves southwards, we're going to see wintry precipitation take place, especially over central and eastern areas, areas that are susceptible to that wind coming in off the North Sea. So we can especially over high ground, Grampians, Cairngorms, North Pennines, North York Moors, down through the uh, you know the the higher parts around Sheffield, for example, Greater Manchester, uh, down towards uh, this is like a geography uh, test, isn't it? Uh, down towards the higher portions of the Midlands, for example, Derbyshire. Uh, these are all areas that are susceptible with that northeasterly wind to see snowfall taking place. But we've also got the potential for system snow. In other words, area of low pressure. Instead of it just being convective showers that come in on that very cold north to northeasterly wind, you've got a system that tries to develop, seen by the models. That wraps up, ramps up. And sometimes, even though that area of, of cold air comes down, and you've got, of course, the incoming solar radiation from the sun that fights against, so it kind of eats away at the cold down at the low levels. Sometimes you don't get a uh, precipitation uh, supported in, in frozen form all the way down to the surface. So it, it, it kind of stays over higher elevations where the air is just a little bit colder. Down towards sea level, quite often it's marginal at this time of the year. But you get a cold enough air mass, you of course do see snow to uh, sea level. And that is still a possibility, by the way. However, the area of low pressure, as it winds up, and enhances precipitation we get that wrap around sometimes you get what you call dynamic cooling so the area of low pressure develops and actually cools the atmosphere that it's in so it actually cools the column as we see the system developing and that may bring the chance of seeing low level snow even into the center of london I'm not saying that we're going to get six inches of snow, but this is a possibility as it goes forward here. So I played through the loop here. This is Wednesday, 2100 hours. We've got, of course, the cold north northeasterly airflow. We've got a system developing at the base of the trough, and it's there. So you see the area of low pressure popping on the south coast, almost bang over Brighton, 999 millibars. And you can see the area of precipitation on the northern flank of that of snow and it's going to be a very marginal situation here certainly over uh, the higher parts around the greater london area uh, don't be surprised if you see some snowfall here uh, still a few days out but certainly it looks very interesting indeed so we've got that 10 28 millibar high just to the northwest of the uk we've got an area of low pressure hugging the south coast of england we've got winds coming in from the east you've got almost all the dynamics coming together beautifully for some very interesting times to come. So the period between the end of Wednesday and the Thursday, the first half of Thursday, when you've got, you know, seen by this model at least, heavy precipitation could be falling as snowfall even in London. So it's, it's like I say, it's gonna be a marginal scenario, but an interesting one nonetheless here. Looking at the exact same time frame. so this is 12 o'clock Thursday, the end in 50 millibar temperatures here, and we've got generally, minus 5 to minus 10 Celsius at 850 millibars. Of course, when you've got an area of low pressure, both within the mid and low levels of the atmosphere, you can transfer cooler air from aloft downwards towards the surface. And that is where London gets its chance of seeing snowfall. 
with this scenario. Wouldn't it be amazing? 20 degrees, a few days later, we'll have snow in there, at least in the air, if not trying to accumulate. I think the best chance of seeing snowfall, by the way, accumulating is in the dark hours of night. You lose the solar radiation, you cool the column naturally, and we get some uh, interesting times to come here. But certainly this is the GFS run, still open to uh, change as we go forward, but uh, it certainly is looking uh, very, very interesting indeed. Let's have a look at the, the closer up view of the British Isles here. Let's go back to the 850 millibar uh, chart. In fact, we'll go to the overview chart and you can see exactly what takes place. So high and dry at the moment. Went through North Yorkshire across the Pennines uh, late this morning. Rain was pretty heavy, actually. It was quite interesting. And then I was speaking about Perrins uh, in uh, just outside Glasgow in Kirk and Tillich. And it was clear blue sky. I'm sitting in Cumbernauld at the moment. I'm sweating in the truck. I've had to close the windows because it's noisy outside. But at the same time, you're actually sweating. So, um, you know, it's, it's just amazing when you see these charts here. So look at the snowfall breaking out here at midnight Tuesday and the Wednesday here. And then we pile in the shards, convective nature shards coming in on that uh, stinging northeasterly wind here. Then it gets interesting, like I say, area of low pressure pops over the channel. On the northern flank of that, that's where you've got the precipitation developing. And the GFS is at least showing a marginal opportunity. Certainly over high ground, folks, I think that that is a snowmaker. Down at low levels, we may see a, a mix of rain and sleet and possibly some wet snow. But if, it, if you can get into the dark hours at night, you would have a, a probably a better chance of seeing snow developing here. But uh, we've got plenty of show, uh, snow showers blowing in uh, over other parts of the British Isles. But I think a lot of attention will be drawn on that scenario further south here as we go forward here. Uh, temperature wise, I think during the daytime across the board, you know, anywhere from uh, three, four degrees in the north uh, to about maybe about eight nine degrees at best further south so that's the period between thursday and friday possibly and saturday overnight especially under clear skies and if we've got lion snow in the ground wouldn't be surprised if we see some of the coldest temperatures of the entire winter believe it or not with this overall setup here and um, so uh, that's one to watch i think as we go forward here looking at snow depth and uh, we'll go back to Wednesday morning here. You can see the, the model indicating some snow over the higher parts of Scotland, as you can see here, especially over the Highlands, uh, Southern Uplands, and of course the, the Cumbrian Fells and Northern England here. And then as we go forward in that area of low pressure develops on the south coast, you can see it's bringing, uh, you know, snowfall. I know it looks widespread, but of course you have to take into consideration melting and whatnot. But, um, you know, interesting times. Watch this space. I appreciate you watching marvelgunweather.com and on YouTube as well. I do appreciate Gavin uh, speaking to his subscribers. Some folk have jumped on board. While Gavin's uh, going to be taking much uh, well-earned time off rest, um, it looks as if we, um, so like I say, of course, our continued thoughts are with Gavin. I just got an interruption there. That's why the video paused. Uh, of course, we continue to think about it, Gavin, at the, this moment in time. And I do appreciate the folks that have came on board. Um, I feel honoured that um, Gavin has, um, you know, basically put me in the, in, the, in the seat, so to speak. I think I've got a lot to live up to, and I don't think I will be able to live up to to Gavin and his uh, terrific reputation that he's built up over the years. But certainly I will try my best to keep you up to date as possible and deliver um, the weather um, as we go through the course of this week. So please like, share and subscribe and I'll be back again hopefully tomorrow with the very latest updates. Bye for now.